This week's video topic was suggested by Vihaim Kohli. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. If you want to leave a suggestion for a What If Wednesday, please drop a comment, respond to the community post that I will do before next Wednesday, or go to Twitter or Discord to leave me a direct response. Any of these methods are valid, and I keep them all in mind, and as you can see, I do not choose the one that is most liked, I choose the one that I like the most. And without further ado, video intro. Hello everyone, I'm Karthu, and today I want to discuss what if Goku was born with God Key. So, before we get into this, we need a brief summary of what God Key is and how it works with the Saiyan DNA. For starters, we don't really know too much about the origins or the technical workings of God Key. However, we do know that it is a form of key that cannot be sensed, and it comes about through training in a special god key dimension, as well as containing your own power within oneself. This interpretation could imply that god key is the same as regular key. However, this key is not leaking from the body, and in fact gives you greater key per cubic inch of your body. That would mean your power level would rise accordingly, because you're not leaking out any, and you're not expending it outside your body where it's not helping you. There are other ways to interpret God Key, but for the sake of the video, we don't need to get into that. And if you want to know more about my thoughts on God Key, I'd suggest watching my Vegeta Super Saiyan God Explained video, where I talk a bit more in depth about my thoughts about God Key. As a shorter version of that video, I will give you the quick conclusion, which is that God Key in a base Saiyan's body will allow them to turn into the Super Saiyan God, and God Key in a Super Saiyan's body will turn them into Super Saiyan Blue or Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. This would mean a Goku who was born with the ability to use God Key would have one of two existences, a permanent Super Saiyan God, or that of a person who could access Super Saiyan God without a ritual or training required. So as the thumbnail shows, you would have a kid Goku who was in Super Saiyan God in one way or another. Now, whether that form is permanent or not is not really the crux of what I'm trying to discuss here, so let's assume it isn't because that helps the further narrative that we're going through, and I think that's the more likely option since after learning God Key, Goku and Vegeta cannot just be Super Saiyan Gods for their entire existences, they seem a bit more strained than even say Super Saiyan Grade 4. So. The assumption there is based off of Dragon Ball Super's interpretation, and the fact that Goku's born with it doesn't seem to innately mean he'd be stuck in the Super Saiyan God form and wouldn't be able to just use regular key and a regular body. That means when he activates the form, he would get a massive power increase, of course. But how large? Well, let's go through the basic rundown. So, you start with Super Saiyan, which is a 50 times multiplier. When you get to Super Saiyan Grade 4, as some of you may not have known, I've discussed this with Seth the Programmer directly, and we have come to the conclusion and the consensus that Super Saiyan 1 Grade 4 is in fact greater than 50 times in some capacity. That capacity is unquantifiable, and in fact, I would say it's not too large, maybe two times or a couple times, but that's just my own personal speculation, no real concrete evidence to back that up. Moving from there, we obviously have a 2 times multiplier and a 4 times multiplier from Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 respectively. That leads us to a greater than 400 times multiplier, which in fact leads us to Vegito. Vegito was stated to have a multiplier similar to that of Super Saiyan 3, so that would mean Super Saiyan 3's greater than 400 times would transfer over to Vegito, who could then stack Super Saiyan, presumably grade 4, on top of it for another greater than 50 times boost you have a greater than greater than 20,000 times, and you add an additional greater than, because Super Saiyan God, Goku in the Battle of Gods arc, should be even stronger than that based on Goku's own statements. So that means we are greater than, greater than, greater than 20,000 times Goku. Now, that's arbitrary, right? So we'll low, low, low ball it to 20,000 times, just so we have a flat number to work with, but no, that number is, in fact, 
lower than what the actual form should be. So 20,000 times Goku, pretty immense. But what does that mean for the longevity of the series? Well, the idea of Goku being able to flick on and off the form, possibly not even at will in the beginning, is very key to this actually working because it would incentivize Goku to keep training and learning from masters to become stronger in his base self because he cannot rely on the Super Saiyan God state. Perhaps he doesn't know how to access it, or perhaps just using a different form is not enough sometimes. Obviously, if he doesn't know how to access it or can't control it very well, narratively that would be the best way to go about it because Goku at a 20,000 times multiplier, even if he had a power level of 1, would be stronger than every single villain up to and a little bit past Vegeta. So what happens after Vegeta? Well then at that point it becomes all what you believe you want to have happen. Goku becomes so strong perhaps through training that he mollywops Frieza. Maybe he does still get Zenkai's enough that 20,000 times multiplier is more than enough to conquer Frieza's you know measly full power. Perhaps you have a Goku who is actually too weak to fight Frieza, despite him having a transformation far greater than it, because Goku is using something that he's had always rather than in the last resort. This is not Super Saiyan coming about at the perfect moment, a culmination of all of Goku's not only training but also Saiyan biology forming into one particular moment, a moment that barely puts him above Frieza in regards to strength generally. It's only a 30 million point difference, and whether you think that's a lot or not, well, there's actually statements that say that Frieza was weakened by the Genkidama, so perhaps he had a greater power level than even Super Saiyan if he was at true full power uninjured. Beyond that, we'd be using extreme headcanon. I mean, beyond headcanon. We'd have to know what Goku would actually go through, what training he would take up, what training he wouldn't take up, and what he would teach the others who are around him. There is a good case to make that Goku would never learn Super Saiyan at all in this timeline, in this reality. So what does he teach Gohan? Does he even have Gohan? Does Vegeta survive? How does he fare against the threat of the android cell? And more than that, would Trunks even come back in time in this timeline? Or would there just be such a different reality that there's not even a Trunks to bring back? There's so many things that could change after the point of the Frieza saga that I think it's a good place to cap off this video, and thank you very much for watching it. If you guys have suggestions, opinions, counterpoints, critiques of this what if, anything at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on not only the series, but the channel as a whole. The notification bell will help you do that even better. You can also check out the Patreon, where I am still currently updating it, and going in the back end, basically, and fiddling things around, I have a little notebook where I'm writing things down, trying to get you guys the best tiering system I possibly can manage at this point in my growth. I'd really appreciate you guys if you go check it out and support however you can, if you would like. You could also check out the t-shirt. I still have it up. I keep forgetting to talk about it in videos. So if you want one of the Carthus Dojo t-shirts, they're pretty cool. It's like a gym logo type thing that we have for the channel, and I like it. And if you do too, please, that is a great way to support the channel. I try to make the shirt as affordable as possible without it basically costing me money to send it to you. Other than that, guys, video, outro.